Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Pokemon Fire Red Omega and episode 5 of the playthrough. Now here we are in beautiful Cerulean City and today we are going to, against my better judgment, try to take on Misty's Gym. Here's the thing about Misty's Gym. It's a water gym. I think I can beat it, but if Elekid goes down... I'm pretty much screwed. So a level 22 Elekid is going to be pretty good against Misty and all of her water types. But then we have Geodude at level 14, who's going to be one hit by anything that's going to be in there. And then Staryu at level 19, it's not going to be helping me out all that much, right? Because I'm facing other water types, so Staryu is not going to be good or bad against anything in that gym. Therefore, it's not going to be a very good backup. So I suppose we are going to just try our luck here. We are going to try to take on Misty's gym. And if worse comes to worse and I get blown out entirely, we can go do the Nugget Bridge and all the training battles that are between us and Bill's house. So hopefully you guys will sit back, relax, and enjoy, and let's see. Cerulean Pokemon Gym, Leader Misty, winning trainers, Gary. It's always that Gary. Yo, champ in the making, let me give you some advice. The Leader Misty is a pro who uses Water-type Pokemon. You can drain all their water with Grass-type Pokemon, or you might use Electric-type Pokemon and zap them. Well, that's the plan, actually. How many trainers do we have here? We have one... Two? Is that all? Can you actually get in the water in here? I wonder. Really quickly, I, I should probably be like focusing on the battles right now, but I want to see, can we actually get into the water? Probably not. No, we can't. I always thought it was neat how this gym is basically one giant pool, and all the trainers slash Pokemon just hang out in the pool all day, waiting for people like me and Gary to show up, which apparently, according to that board back there, Gary is the first person in the history of this gym to actually defeat Misty. And here we have a horsey. Here's the thing about Generation 1, and I was thinking about this because going into this playthrough, I thought a lot about what Pokemon I wanted to get and how I want to do the playthrough and what I'm going to be doing in it and stuff like that, you know? And obviously, you want to have a water type. You need one to surf to get to certain areas. And while I was thinking about the water type, which one I wanted to get, I was like, there are so many good ones out there in Generation 1, you know? I wanted to get Starmie, so that's why I chose Staryu slash Starmie for this playthrough. But Sheldr slash Cloyster there, Horsey and Seedra, those are cool Pokemon. Tentacool and Tentacruel, Seal and Dugong. I mean, there are so many awesome water types in Gen 1 that you could very easily just fill out your entire team with water type Pokemon and be pretty happy. I wonder... You can probably beat this whole game with only water types now that I think about it because... If you give them multiple moves, like for example, uh, Seal slash Dugong can also learn Ice moves, which I assume most water types can, but you know, they can also have Ice moves to help you out there. Um, Star U slash Star Me can learn Psychic moves. I'm trying to think of some other ones off the top of my head right here. This thing's level 22 for crying out loud. Jeez. If the pre trainers Pokemon is level 22, I don't even want to know what Misty's Pokemon are going to be. And keep in mind, she will have six Pokemon. That's a bit concerning. So, yeah, you could probably do an entire uh, entire water team. That'd be interesting. I've never actually done that, although I always thought it was cool, because later on in the game especially, you're going to face some people who are going to have, like, only... You know, all the gym leaders have one certain type, then you face other trainers out in the world who have, like, only flying types, for example, or only electric types, or, you know, only poison types, or, you know, stuff like that. And I thought it'd be fun to do, like, a gimmick playthrough. I've never actually done... Why didn't I think to do a gimmick playthrough? That'd be kind of fun, I think. But really quickly here, you guys may be wondering, like, what the heck are you doing here? Even though I didn't take a lick of damage, we are going to go and get all of my PP back at the Poké Center here before we go and take on Misty, because I want to have all the Thunder Punches I can. I have a feeling I'm going to need them. And again, if Elekid goes down, I might be screwed. So, I'm a bit concerned. If they have, if she has a type, are there any ground slash water types out there? I don't know. I don't know what Pokemon she's going to have. I know in the game itself, she had, oh, who'd she have? Goldeen, maybe a Psyduck. I know, no, maybe she has a Star You and a Star Me. The Star Me was her final Pokemon. It was terrifying back in the day. Hi, you're a new face. Only those trainers who have a policy about Pokemon can turn pro. What is your approach when you catch and train Pokemon? My policy is an all-out offensive with water type Pokemon. Well, I'm going to tell you, Misty. I mean, I was just saying an all-water team could actually work, but it might not work in every situation. Because let's say you're facing someone who only has grass types. Then what are you going to do? You know? You can't have one gimmick. You got mixed up a little bit. So Leader Misty would like to battle. Sent out Star You leading the pack. Okay, it's only level 18. That's not bad whatsoever. Uh, this should actually be a one-hit uh, knockout for me. And then Elekid should hit level 23. All right. Easy enough. At the very least, even if we lose against her, Elekid's going to get some nice uh, leveling here. Which... 
We're going to need that later on, I'm sure. Here comes Psyduck. Psyduck, an another awesome idea for a water Pokemon. But the thing is, like, Psyduck and Golduck, maybe... No, in Generation 1? No? I'm not sure. What's the difference between Psyduck and Golduck and, like, Star You and Star Me? They're both water Pokemon that can use psychic moves. <laughs> I mean, all four of them technically are, right? So, like, really, what's the difference there? There's a bit of, a bit of overlap there. About to send out a Seedra. Uh, we'll keep Elkid out, I suppose. Keep on thunder punching. I am very happy I did not go with Magby as my starter because Magby would have been pretty rough to use in the first gym and he would have been pretty rough here in the second gym as well. So far, Elekid is dominating Love Disc. Oh no. Is Love Disc... Wait, that's the heart-shaped fish, right? Or is that the ground type? Yeah, it's a heart-shaped fish. Okay. That's not part ground or anything, is it? Okay, I think we're good. Yeah, Elekid is, not only is it a pretty good attacker, but it also has a lot of speed. And my Elekid in particular has a hasty nature, which increases its speed even more. My Staryu is also hasty, by the way. I was actually looking into this off camera. I just kind of like looking at my team and thinking about what I'm going to do here in this episode and stuff. And I realized you would, you would confuse me. Please hit, please hit, Elekid. Elekid, please, this is the gym. I need this. Good job. <laughs> So, I was actually looking at the natures of all my Pokemon, and I was looking at uh, the abilities they have as well. Um, my poor Geodude. <laughs> Not the greatest Geodude. We leveled up twice, by the way, so far since we entered here. I'm trying to learn Thunder Waves. This Thunder Wave is like a guaranteed paralysis, pretty much, right? Let's read it real quick. Yeah, a weak electric shock that is sure to cause paralysis if it hits, and it does have 100 accuracy. It can be lowered, but it does have 100 accuracy by default. Huh. Well, that makes me wonder, like, do I want to give up Swift in exchange for Thunder Wave, like, guaranteeing paralysis, or do I just want to kind of leave it be? Because I have Static, and if they attack me, they may become paralyzed. I think I'm just going to keep the moves I have. I like having a, a, a diverse move pool, and while, yes, these are both normal moves, Mega Kick is not incredibly reliable, whereas Swift never misses no matter what, pretty much. I'm sure there's some situation where Swift will miss, but by and large, it's not going to. Uh, so, and then, then, of course, I have my fighting move and my electric move. So, yeah, I'm going to keep things the way they are, I think. I don't think I really need Thunder Wave. Although, I'm, I'm saying that now, but I guarantee I'm going to regret it here in a second. Okay, here comes the big scary star. Oh, I, I mean to do that. No, we'll keep Elekid out. She has two Pokemon left already, and we've swept through all of them. Level 23 star me should have waited. Should have waited to evolve that because uh, Star U learns Bubble Beam at level 28. That means your Star Me probably doesn't know. Oh gosh, their Star Me's faster! And they used the move I just decided not to use! Alright, Ella Kid, you're confused and paralyzed. I believe in you! Hey, look at him go! He's a freaking animal! <laughs> and now you're paralyzed! Aha, static! Hey, hey man, hey. We, 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 don't, we, don't, we don't need... How do you eat a citrus berry? You're a starfish. From space, most likely. I was doing some uh, reading on star you slash star me. I uh, could never actually had one before, you know? And so I thought it'd be fun to like, read up on them. Don't hurt yourself. And apparently, like, in the lore, a lot of people believe that star me is from outer space. Because apparently... Oh, that would be... No, that, that's a crit. It gets knocked out. But apparently that uh, the gem it has can, like, send out light that reaches all the way to space, which is nuts. El Kid, 1,000... And 20 experience. Goodness gracious. Togetic? I guess that does make sense. Given how, um... Uh, she had a Togepi in the anime. Okay, so here's my strategy, guys. Let me know what you guys think about this. We're, 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 uh, we're playing 4D chess here with old Misty. So, we're putting out Staryu. And the idea here... Oh, no! <laughs> I am the worst 4D chess player ever. So the plan was to cure the paralysis and heal Elekid up with potions. I have none of those things in my bag. <laughs> and I was going to have Star you out here just kind of taking a couple hits for me. Uh, all right. Well, it's still faster than Togetic. And it's not doing any damage. But... We may be able to whittle it down. And worst comes to worst, um, I put out... I do have that one revive. And by the way, that ooh, that revive was found in um, 
in Mount Moon, which I grabbed off camera. I was wondering if I should actually grab it or not off camera, but it's literally just on the ground right there towards the exit. Alright, it was nice knowing you, Staryu. But yeah, so we can send out Elekid now. Hopefully Elekid can get some work done before he gets knocked out. Hit that Thunder Punch, man. Magical Leaf, that's probably going to do 22 damage. No, it didn't! And he actually hit it. This should be super effective, right? Because part flying. Oh, no! All right. Uh, I got rid of quick attack. I got rid of quick attack. Well, we can hit the swift, although she's probably going to heal it with like a lemonade or something, right? Yeah. I shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't have hit swift. I should have did um, thunder punch again. Ah, uh, you would not miss. I don't think Magical Leaf has a very high chance of missing. Okay, so... We're gonna have to put out Geodude. And Geodude's likely gonna be knocked out in one hit by that Magical Leaf that is so effective against him. But... We can use this revive... On Elekid. Come on back, my friend. With 33 hit points. It's more than you had the first time you went in, so... Should be okay. Watch Geodude somehow... Just eat this. Yeah, there's no way. There's no way Geodude was going to uh, get through there. Okay. Come on, Elekid. <laughs> Come on. You almost slipped this whole gym by yourself. I believe in you. Come on. Let's get a crit. Just like with Starmie. Hit a crit. Hit a crit. Hey! There we go. We don't even need crits. It's super effective. Elekid, my boy. This is why I picked him. <laughs> Player defeated leader, Misty. Wow, you're too much. All right, you can have the Cascade Badge. That's my favorite name for a badge, by the way. Cascade. It just, it rolls off the tongue. <laughs> the show you beat me. And we got 2300 for winning, which I can use that to buy potions, which I don't have. <gasps> I didn't know it evolved this early. I thought it evolved at like level 32 or 36. Ella Kid's evolving. Elekid evolved into Electabuzz! Ladies and gentlemen! Oh, that's so cool! And let's learn Ice Punch! That is a wonderful move to learn right now! Goodness gracious! Oh uh, yeah, I think we'll get rid of Swift for that. Now, Mega Kick still has that chance to miss, but it, it'll probably hit most of the time. Right? Oh, uh, no. Do I want the guaranteed normal hit that doesn't do a lot of damage, or the risky one that does twice as much damage? You know, we're gonna risk it. We are going to risk it with our Electabuzz, because our Electabuzz will not let us down. We're dropping Swift and keeping Mega Kick. One, two, and poof! Electabuzz forgot Swift, and it learned Ice Punch. That's so cool. That's so cool. The Cascade Badge makes all Pokemon up to level 30 obey. That includes even outsiders you got in trades. There's more. You can now use Cut anytime, even outside of battle. You can cut small cut down small trees to open new pathways. You can also have my favorite TM. <gasps> Something for Star you so it's not useless? Water Pulse! Alright! Alright, we can't- Oh, it's actually knocked out right now. Okay, so instead of doing that, let's go and- <laughs> Let's go and heal up our poor Pokemans. Poor star you. You were fodder. That's all you were. You, you were just you were just fodder. Mis misplaced fodder, because I thought I could heal up Elekid. <laughs> oh no. I can't believe that though. I like the buzz. It's here. Already. I, I I didn't think it would evolve that early, but it did. Level 24. There we go. Now we have an Electabuzz. <laughs> but yeah, like I was saying back there in the gym, I was looking at the um the natures and stuff like that, and the abilities. So, Static is a pretty good ability for Electabuzz. Uh, I like that one a lot. Um, and Hasty is not a terrible nature. Probably not the best one, but Hasty increases speed and lowers... I forget, regular defense? Something like that. It lowers something that's not really that bad. So, it's a pretty decent nature. Um, Geodude, however, has a gentle nature, which is terrible. <laughs> terrible for Geodude. It increases its special defense and lowers its regular defense. But here's the thing. It's 
really good at regular defense, and it's not good at special defense. Like, you want to just basically build into the things that you're good at as compared to trying to, like, uh, you know, work on the things that you're not good at, so to speak, especially in competitive battling. Like, you don't take a Pokemon that's, like, has really high attack and then lower its regular attack to give it extra special attack or anything. It doesn't make sense. Like, you don't take a Pokemon that has really good special attack and low speed and give it higher speed and lower special attack. It's not a good strategy. You want to build into the things that you're good at, right, by default. So, we have a very bad nature for our Geodude, that's okay, because it's my Geodude, and I love it, and Rockhead isn't the greatest ability either, and then Staryu uh, also has a hasty nature, which is not bad, not great, I mean, it's already pretty quick, but now it's even faster, but the ability, it could have gotten this really good ability that makes it so it heals a little bit, and also, I think, maybe cures, um, it's called Nature's Cure. It cures, like, status effects when you're swapped out. It changes based on gents. I'm not sure which one it would have. But that's a pretty good ability. But instead, it has the Illuminate ability, which means that when it's first in my party, it increases the encounter rate of Pokemon that I go up against. Like, I'll be walking through the grass. If Staryu's my, uh, the, the, the leader of my party, it just means I'm gonna have a ridiculous amount of Pokemon appearing, which is... Not exactly great. So, um, I'm not sure what to do with the rest of this episode here. I want it to be a bit shorter than normal because I'm noticing, if you look at the trend of the first four episodes of this playthrough, every episode has gotten longer. <laughs> To the point where they're almost an hour long. So I want this one to be a bit shorter. I am a bit busy today. I was busy yesterday too. Um... This placeman over here. I was busy yesterday as well, which is why there was no episode. And I try to record these on a daily basis as, as compared to recording them every single day. But uh, right here, yep, I was say, right here we should have a battle with my boy Gary. Yo, Nero, you're still struggling along back here? I'm doing great. I caught a bunch of strong and smart Pokemon. Here, let me see what you caught, Nero. So yeah, this is probably going to be a bit of a shorter episode. I'm not sure, um, I guess, I guess, I'll, I guess I'll talk about it here a little bit today. Um, looking at a home. Um, I've been renting for quite a long time now, and looking at some different places to actually purchase. Now, uh, <laughs> I, should I keep him in here? Uh, we'll try it. Oh, you're gonna screech me. So I've been looking for, at some places for a while, and I'm not the most, uh, successful person here on YouTube, but I've been doing it professionally for about seven years now. I've got some money saved, and, um... I'm getting a mortgage. Uh, hopefully, assuming everything goes right, I'll be getting a mortgage on a place and uh, doing some looking at that right now. And it's a whole process. Anyone that's been involved in that process before knows. Don't knock me out. Don't knock me out. Ah, knows that it can be very time consuming and very stressful and lots of paperwork and everything else. But um, I'm not getting my hopes up. That's why I don't like talking about it all that much because. I don't want to say, yeah, I'm moving, you know, big life change, so on and so forth, and then have it not work out. Because that's happened three times. The first three places I've looked at uh, did not work out. And the reason why I kept Geodude here at the very beginning, by the way, is because uh, I want him to, I want to swap him out and have him get the experience for taking on Smoochum. And, ah, uh, ha, 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 my starter's evolved, Gary. And yours isn't. What do you say to that? Besides confusing me. Yeah. You probably don't say a whole lot, do you? What would be best here, actually, against Smoochum? I just want to give it a big, mighty thunder, er, mega kick. I want to call it thunder kick, because I was reading thunder punch while I said it. I haven't missed this, this ability yet, by the way. It's only 75% accurate, which in Pokemon standards means it's like 10% accurate. But, uh, it's not missing. About to send out Abra, are you? I imagine his Abra is actually going to have moves. So that means uh, Gary here. It's important we pay attention to his Pokemon, by the way, because what Pokemon he has... He's going to have later on, most likely. So he's probably going to have an Alkazam by towards the end of the game. But does his Abra know anything besides Teleport? Probably does. It probably does. So we're going to swap it back out here. I should probably put Staryu out there, but we're okay. We'll just keep Electabuzz Buzz for now, I think. Oh, is it really just going to use Teleport nonstop? It did this in the original game, and <laughs> it was basically like a free Pokemon you could take out because it couldn't do anything. Ah, oh, I should have left uh, Geodude out there. Love him up a little bit. But yeah, I've looked at uh, plenty of places uh, in the past. Uh, very rarely. Magnitude's a good move. Uh, do they end up working out? Mm, we got Mega Punch, Tackle. Do I really need Tackle? Then again, do I really need Rock Tomb, Rock Throw, and... Well, Magna Magnitude is going to be a, um, a ground move. I don't think we really need Rock Tomb. I taught it to him because we had the TM for it, but it's really not that great of a move. We'll drop that. We'll keep Tackle. I don't think we're going to need Tackle really in any situation, but whatever. He'll be all right. 
a level 25 Electabuzz. And Snubble. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's so funny, but Snubble is the weirdest, not, they're weird Pokemon, but Snubble is, it's like a bulldog, but it's pink and looks like it's wearing a dress. Yeah, it's still so angry. It's just, <laughs> it's just so weird. It's so weird. All right, let's get uh, Star U out here. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't do anything. I never taught Water Pulse to Star U. I just remembered. I got right in the middle of my story, and I forgot all about teaching old Star U. Uh, water Pulse, which is probably better than Water Gun. I assume it is. I don't know. That bite's going to hurt. Oh, it didn't hurt all that much. And down with Snubble. Easy. Bum, 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 Hey, take it easy. You won already. Bum, 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 Hey, guess what? I went to Bill's and got him to show me his rare Pokemon. That adds a lot of pages to my Pokedex. After all, Bill's world famous as a Pokemaniac. I love how that's like a profession. Maybe or a title, I suppose, in this world. A Pokemaniac. Am I a COD maniac? I don't know. Uh, he invented the Pokemon storage system on PC, too. Since you're using a system, you should go thank him. Well, I better get rolling. Smell you later. Don't tell him to smell me later, dude. Come on. Whoa, where are you? We come back for? Oh, yeah, right. I feel sorry for you. No, really. You're always plotting behind me. So here, I'll give you uh, a little present as a favor. The fame checker? A chatty gossip like you? That thing's perfect. I don't need it because I don't give a hoot about others. All right. This time, I'm really gone, smell ya. What, 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 what's, what's a fame, fame checker? Is that... No. There's an item in the game that makes it so you can re-battle people that you've already faced, which is neat. But I don't think... Oak, Daisy... Wait, how does Daisy have no... Favorite kind of Pokemon? It just re-reads out what I've talked to them about. Then there's this person. I, I don't even know what this thing's for. I'm just going I'm just going to avoid that for the time being. Also, I can't help but notice that behind this person's house, actually it's behind the other person. Sorry, old timer. Actually I'll talk to you really quickly. I I can call I I thought I said concoot there for a second. I'm like, what is concoot? <laughs> What's actually a C there? Let's how the C looks like a no. I concoct a variety of medicine from berry powder. Using a good berry powder, I can make any kind of medicine. Now tell me, do you have an interest in berries? Uh sure. Why must you lie to me? How many berries do you have? Not a one. I I wasn't sure I was supposed to have berries or not. Okay. Well, sorry, my dude. I guess I'll go and Go to the house I meant to go to, because there's grass out behind it, and boy, I'd like to see what Pokemon are going to be there. Only skilled trainers can collect Pokemon badges. Say you have at least one. Those badges have amazing secrets, did you know? Now then, which of the eight badges should I describe? Uh, probably none of them. It just tells you what all the badges are going to be doing, and like what t uh, what HMs and stuff like that you can learn. I'm not sure where you grab cut yet. I feel like I should have had it by now. And you can actually surf and then take that to go over. You see at the very, very bottom left of the screen, there's you can make out what looks to be a cave. If you have a surf at the end game, you can go up here and then go down there and then enter that cave. And I think that's where Mewtwo is. I think I'm pretty sure that's uh, Mewtwo's cave. But let's check out the grass right here. Uh, I imagine it might be the same Pokemon that we saw back on the route right before we got the Cerulean City, but I don't... Oh, Pichu! It's a Pichu! We saw a Pikachu back there, but no Pichus. Now, here's the thing. Nah, it's too fast for me. I should really heal up Geodude. Magnitude 7! That should knock out Pichu, right? One hit? Easy peasy? There we go. A little bit of experience roll with Geodude. Definitely risking it a little bit by, uh... Having it go into battle with seven hit points. Wait a minute, what am I doing here? I was just talking about this. We can uh, grab Staryu, put Staryu as our lead Pokemon, and the Illuminate ability it has means it actually, I looked it up online, it increases the chance of Pokemon appearing by 100%, like literally twice as many appear, uh, which is very interesting. But still, like, and for battling and such, pretty useless uh, ability. But if you're actually playing, it's not terrible. Okay, we got another Pichu. I just want to see what's all here. Hmm. 
Another peach. Okay. Is this like... Is this like a Pichu daycare? There actually is a daycare uh, just south of Cerulean City. Which is very nice. I wonder if I should... Should I grab a Pokemon and just, put, just pop it in daycare and just kind of leave it there? <laughs> and then come back and get it at the end game? Like, ah, oh, your... I don't know. Your Redatada is now like level 70. It's grown a lot. That'll be... $11 billion. <laughs> I don't know. I tend to actually like to train the Pokemon I have. Okay, this is pretty much Pichu freaking city over here. So I don't think we're actually going to be finding any more Pokemon. That's okay, I suppose. Oh, I didn't have time to move out of the grass that time. A Pidgey. I'm still undecided as to what I want to do for a flying type. I gotta admit to you guys, I'm leaning towards finding a Spearow and turning it into a Fearow. I'm just saying. I'm considering it still. I kind of like him. He's not bad. And competitively, Firo's not a great Pokemon, but he's fast and he's got pretty good uh, attack. Not great, but pretty good uh, attack, which isn't bad. And I think he's also got some good stab moves as well. So, you know, he not, might not be terrible. Well, while we're here, while we're here, let's talk to this girl. Slowbro, withdraw. No, that's wrong. It's so hard to control Pokemon. Your Pokemon's obedience depends on your abilities as a trainer. That's kind of like a callback to the whole uh, don't overlevel your Pokemon because if... You know, they get too high of a level and you don't have the badge requirements. They'll stop listening to you. And Slowbro here is not listening to this poor girl. Let's see what's in this house. So, too much time, too little to do. There is nothing entertaining happening anywhere. Well, it's on the TV, told timer. There's a Pokemon on TV. It looks like it's having fun. Well, that guy doesn't look like he's having fun. He just sounds so sad. So melancholy. Over here is the infamous bike shop. Grass and caves handled easily. Bike shop. So here's the thing. When you first start playing Pokemon, you know, for the first time, before you learn how you actually get a bike, you walk into the bike shop, you're like, oh, I can have a bike. I keep forgetting that uh, technically I could be running around. I can't do it actually in here. One, let's go outside for a sec. I could technically be using my running shoes, but I always forget to use those. But uh, when you're first playing through the Pokemon games, you're like, oh, a bike. Like you hear that you can get a bike. And you're sitting there looking at the different colors of the bikes and you're like, oh, a bike shop. Let's go and talk to the guy. Hi, welcome to our bike shop. We have just a bike for you. And it costs... One million dollars, which for those who don't know, is impossible. You can't get that many. You can only get 999,999. That's it. You can't actually get one million. And so I'm like, I have 10,000. I'll never be able to afford a bike, you know? But you get the bike later on with a bike voucher. A plain city bike is good enough for me. After all, you can't put a shopping basket on a mountain bike. Which game? Was it Gen 2 or Gen 3? I really think it was Gen 2 that had the Acro Bike and the Mock Bike. I'm telling you guys right now, I adored the Acro Bike. You're a trainer too, collecting about Yeah, okay. I'm trying to find which one of you guys has cut, and apparently none of you do. I think I've talked to every person here in this town. But yeah, the Acro Bike where you could do wheelies, I loved it. Will you stop? Dude. All right. If that Slowbro wasn't there, you could cut down that small tree. That way, you could get to the other side. I think there's a way around it, though. I mean, there is. It involves... Will you stop getting in my way, dude? Seriously. You have to go through the building up there that has the police officer guarding it. You're making an encyclopedia on Pokemon? That sounds amusing. Oh, jeez. Well, apparently, we don't get cut. Hey! Who's that fella? That's not Koga, is it? The purple hair makes me think it's Koga, but I don't think it is. But there's somebody guarding the cave. That's neat. So, you can only, I think he only moves out of the way when you beat the entire game. Like, once you get to endgame and you beat the Elite Four and all that stuff. I think only then does he actually move out of the way. That way you can't, like, get in there and cheese it and grab Mewtwo uh, before <laughs> you head on to the Pokemon League. But, ladies and gentlemen, I suppose that is going to be all for this episode of the Pokemon Fire Red Omega playthrough. Apologies for it being slightly shorter than normal, but uh, a little bit strapped for time here today. But I did want to explore pretty much the entirety of Cerulean City here today, which we were able to accomplish that. We can't get this officer out of the way right now because there was a robbery. Team Rocket's there. What's funny is he's sitting there guarding the house. The Team Rocket guy is literally right there, dude. You are the worst cop ever. <laughs> but in the next episode, we are going to head north here on Nugget Bridge. Is it called Nugget Bridge? Oh, it's called Route 24. I don't want to go up too far because there's lots of trainers. But yeah, there's gonna be like five back-to-back -back, uh, Pokemon trainer battles there. And then there's going to be a bunch of grass, a bunch of other trainers leading us all the way to Bill's house. And then once we do that, we can go all the way back down. And I think once that happens, that's when the officer will move out of the way. And then we can start making our way out of Cerulean City and checking out the other areas. Let's see here. Town map. If, if memory serves, which it probably doesn't serve all that well, um, we go from here, and then, hmm, I remember there's a cave that we can take, 
a little tunnel, if you will, there on Route 5 that takes us down to Vermilion City. But do we head there before we head to Lavender Town? I think we do, because I think after we do that, we end up going back here, and then we go down this way. It's been so long, guys. I'll figure it out as the time, as we, as we cross, we'll cross the bridge when we get to it, is what I'm trying to say here. But ladies and gentlemen, that's all I have for you guys here today. Thank you guys so much for all the continued support of the playthrough. We're having so much fun doing this playthrough, and uh, every, every day, man, I look forward to making a new episode and reading the comments and incorporating all of your guys' feedback. So until then, I hope you guys enjoyed. Drop me a rating, and I hope you guys all have a wonderful day.